Today we're going to be looking at Fab Filters Pro Q3. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. Today we're going to be taking an overview of Pro Q3 Fab Filters new plugin. But before we do, if this is your first time here on this channel, we look at home recording studio subjects such as plugins, doors, equipment and techniques. So if that's the kind of thing you're interested in, then please like, subscribe, share it with your friends, etc. And I'll be happy to see you again in the future. With that said, let's get stuck in. So here we are in Studio One, and I thought I'd start off by telling you what I'm currently using for EQ in Studio One, just to give you an idea of where I'm coming from. I actually do use Pro Q already, but I use version one, a really old version, probably about four years old or so. And I've used that because it does exactly what I want it to do. It does a great job. So I haven't felt the need to change, to be honest with you. Um, this is on an acoustic guitar, and I'll typically be using, as you can see here, something like a high shelf to add a bit of sparkle to the the top end of the guitar, then some notches in the mid and the bottom end of the guitar to say, take out some yucky frequencies, and then I'll almost certainly have a low cut. And when I do the low cut, um, I like to make it as steep as possible. In fact, I really sometimes like to have a brick wall, but they don't have that in Pro Q1. So I've actually been using Ozone's equalizer beforehand and just doing a hot, what they call a high pass rather than a low cut and I use those two in combination. So that's my current situation. I'll switch those off. So let's go from Pro Q1 up to Pro Q3. Wow, my first thing was is, okay, it's pretty much the same looking. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, if you've got a great kind of interface design, then roll with it. But I quickly found out there's some big improvements. The first thing is, is you can actually resize the thing. So that's a really great thing to be able to do. In fact, you can even go full screen. So that's really cool. The only gripe I really have is that I do find it a little bit difficult to grab the corners at times to drag it out. As you can see, I'm struggling there to a custom size, but that's the only gripe I have. And perhaps someone at Fabfield is going to fix that. So let's dive in. Let's start off with what I would do on this acoustic guitar, which is to add my low cut. I'll just pop that in there. I usually listen out to see where I'm going to uh, put it. And as you can hear, I can hear lots of bottom end there. I'll take it down to somewhere where nothing much is happening. And I'll pop in my low cut like that. I had that before. That's great. And then when I go to set my slope, oh, what's this? Not only a 96 but an actual brick wall down there hurrah so for me right away i have a reason to stick to pro q and not go to any other filters which is uh great probably not a big enough reason to uh do the upgrade but there's much much more to come so that's one of the features which i think they've added even since version 2 which is really really great now, you notice that I was listening to frequencies there using this sort of little headphone icon to isolate certain frequencies and that's just one of the ways that you can try and identify the frequencies that you want to affect but fab filter seem to have thought of another couple of things you can do and the first little one it's a bit of fun really is if you click on this piano keyboard icon down there you can see it brings up a piano keyboard and it shows you there with the frequency you're selecting what note occupies that frequency of course you know notes on guitars and other instruments occupy a range of frequencies but this is the the focus so that's a really helpful feature so if you know you've got a particular note a low G or something which is booming and you just want to identify that then that may be helpful to you the other thing is with the uh, analyzer if we switch that on I'll put freeze on and we'll let it play for a moment You can see the peaks are building up here and then you can start to see these notes appear up here and these uh, particular frequencies which they're suggesting to you might be problematic so I can now grab that and pull that down and so on and so forth so they're really trying to help you to identify problematic frequencies so I'll switch that freeze off and I'll go back to doing what I normally do which is to find 
troublesome frequencies in that guitar. Let's have a listen. Okay, so that's a little bit sort of honky there. I'll just reduce that down, make it fairly narrow. And usually you're looking for something in the bass as well. You can hear that booming out there. Okay. And that's great. And I would probably do that in much more detail under normal circumstances. And as I mentioned earlier, I will usually pop in a high shelf to give it some sparkle. So let's do that and have a listen. I may have gone a little bit overboard there, but you get the gist. So that is all fairly the same as what I'm getting in my previous version. Again, probably no real reason for me to upgrade at this point, but I have to say the best is yet to come. So let's start off with something which is completely new to this version, and that is Dynamic EQ. Now, Dynamic EQ is one of those things, if you go now and Google it and look at it on uh, Wikipedia and you read the explanation, you may well be confused. I know I was. Um, so it's probably better seen in action than it is explained. But essentially what you're doing is you're only applying certain EQ curves or focuses at certain thresholds. Now, the smart ones amongst you will have already noticed, isn't that a little bit like a compressor or a multiband compressor. And yeah, it is, in my opinion, this is a little bit easier to use. So how's it implemented here? Let's have a look at this high shelf I've got. What I'm gonna do is there's an outer ring to the band gain here. And now if I start to move it around, you'll see another line appears. Now what this line is indicating is what new EQ curve will happen at a particular threshold. So I'm actually gonna flatten this out so nothing's really happening in that there's no, there's no shelf in fact at a certain threshold. So let's have a listen and see what's happening. Now you can see from the interface that in fact, when the guitar is doing the chops, that EQ curve is flattening out. And that's really, really useful. If I move to further on in the song to where the chorus is, the chops get much, much bigger on the, on the guitar. And in fact, they probably stand out a little bit too much and a little bit harsh on the top ends. Let's have a listen. So you can actually go even further and say, I don't just wanna flatten it out. I actually wanna reduce those chops. And in fact, what Pro-Q has done for you at this point is choose an automatic threshold which it thinks is appropriate, but you can change that yourself. Click on this here, auto, and now you've got a new threshold control and you can control when that new EQ band sort of kicks in. And that's really, really important because what I'm doing there is starting to really chop out or take out those chops, but I'm still maintaining that sparkle that I wanted on the guitar, you know, when it's being played normally. So for me, that there is a little game changer. In fact, if I go a bit further, I can show you. It can really flatten those chops out. And those, as if those of you who play guitar and record guitar, you'll know they can be kind of problematic in mixes. And talking about mixes, we come to the last feature that I'm gonna look at, which I think is a really, really key feature. Now, before I launch into this, I wanna look at what we normally use EQ for, because I think most people, when they start doing EQing, especially for home recording, probably think that EQ is a, things that you use as kind of tone controls to make things sound nice. And that's kind of true to some degree, but in actual fact, they're really, really powerful tools in mixes because you will get certain instruments which occupy the same frequency ranges and they can kind of cancel each other out. And probably some of you know already that that's a really key part when you're doing your mixing to bring uh, certain instruments forward is to change their EQ so that you can bring them out in the mix. 
Now, it's a bit of a skill to actually be able to hear which frequencies you will need to adjust. And that's a, that's a part of the whole thing is you need to learn skills to get better at this. But FabFilter really try to help you out here. So in actual fact, I've attached the uh, Pro-Q3 filter to a number of instruments in the mix, the guitar, um, an organ and a piano as, as well as others. So let's have a look at the organ. And what we've got down here in the analyzer is the ability to compare that organ to one of the other instruments that I've got the Pro filter, uh, the Pro-Q3 filter on. So let's compare it to the piano. Let's have a listen. So not only is it comparing the two, but you'll see as it's playing that there's some sort of dark red areas that appear in the analyzer. Let's have a look again. So look here and here. Some big ones there. So that's a really, really clever idea. What they're doing is they're showing you where those instruments are, are occupying uh, similar frequencies in a sort of a powerful way. And that's gonna give you a clue as to which areas to start to cut in one or other of those instruments. I think that's another really, really powerful feature for me, which will certainly make me think very, very hard about upgrading to Pro Q3. So this is available as a 30 day trial at the moment. I'll put some links in the description. So I highly recommend that you go and download it, give it a try. You may well end up buying it, I have to warn you. So there you have it, Fab Filters Pro Q3. I think a really important plugin which you could get a lot of use out for this kind of money. So that's a big consideration when you're getting a plugin, how much are you actually gonna use it? And in my opinion, I could use this on just about every track, on just about every song. So thank you for joining me. If you do like this kind of content and you'd like to see more, please do not forget to subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so you'll get notifications about my new content. With that said, I'll see you next week. Next week.